The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to our Good Friday service this morning. May it be for you um, a cry of victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, given up into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday. The basis for the sermon this morning is the Lord's servant song from the prophet Isaiah chapters 52 and 55. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall pro prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews, chapters 4 and 5. Since then, we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tested, tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, 
Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And Jesus saw his mother and the disciples, disciple whom he loved standing nearby. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now fulfilled, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father and from his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow baptized saints, what's going on in this awful account? How is one supposed to understand it? There's so much happening, so many ways you could look at it. But what does God want us to see? Did you know that the clearest view of Christ's suffering and death does not come from the Gospels of the New Testament, but from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, speaking 700 years before his passion? The Gospels only tell us what happened. Isaiah tells us why. The Gospels describe what is seen. Isaiah tells us what God wants us to see. He even foretells how believers will come to see the events of this day. Behold, my servant will succeed. The Lord sings. He will rise, be exalted, and be very high. Yes, the servant song of the Lord in Isaiah is a cry of victory. How can this be? It starts with a cry of victory, ends with the victor sharing his spoils, and yet nothing in between looks remotely like triumph. What do you see? 
Do you see triumph? For that's what God wants you to see. Behold, my servant will succeed. Adam failed. Israel failed. You and I failed. But look at my servant. He will do it. He will not love himself. He will not choose himself. He will not even look at himself. Do you see him? Do you see my servant? You better look carefully. The Lord sings. Because what he does is not what you expect. You better look carefully. Because his work comes in the most unlikely place for divine activity. You better look carefully. Because my servant will be so physically marred and disfigured. It will make you want to look away. What then do you see? The servant does not offer you a sentimental or syrupy love, but a love as fierce as death, a love driven by nails, marked with scars and crowned with thorns. We do not have a God without wrath, who brings a people without sin into a kingdom without judgment, through a Christ without a cross. No, there is sin and wrath and judgment and cross. But what we're not ready for is that it all ends up in one place for the sake of love. The innocent servant takes the place of the guilty in such a way that he experiences the full weight of divine punishment of their sins and also blocks them from experiencing it. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? So shall he sprinkle many nations. He will be rejected in death in order to sprinkle all with his sacrificial blood. And boy, do we need it. We've hurt people, his people. We've trusted false gods. We've withheld mercy from those around us. We've looked down on the gifts God tries to give us. We got a whole pile of things that we don't even want to look at. It seems to get bigger all the time. So what do we do? We finally see the Lord sings. We were ignorant. We were senseless. But the Lord calls us to look so that we finally understand who this servant really is and why he has truly come, who has believed what he has heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. It is completely astonishing, scandalous even, who can embrace it. This servant was made to suffer for me. He was made to suffer the full heat of God's wrath for me. He was made to take away my sin. The Lord acknowledges it is a hard idea to hug. But that's what he wants you to see. Initially, we could not. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. He must have deserved it. This cruel punishment, there's nothing special about him, whatever we thought. We could not see him as our substitute. But we misjudge this servant. We see it clearly now. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I see my sickness on him. His suffering is nothing else but our sin. He bears it, carries it, like an animal. The full burden of our sin laid up on this lamb, God's appointed scapegoat for the guilt of all mankind. Luther writes, and all the prophets saw this, that Christ was to become the greatest thief, murderer, adulterer, robber, desecrator, blasphemer there has ever been anywhere in the world. He's not acting in his own person now. Now he's not the son of God, the born of the virgin, but he's a sinner. 
This is what makes him God's Christ, the Messiah. This is not a tragedy, but redemption. This is not a catastrophe, but a loving act of God. This is not for God, but for you. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. What does God want us to see? Our healing. This punishment of our guilt in Christ heals us. And not just in some spiritual way. He's punished in body and soul to heal us in both body and soul. Forgiveness now with bodily resurrection to follow. Look, it's the healing of the whole creation in a servant of the Lord. Or as St. Paul writes, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. This is what this servant is going to accomplish. This healing is what God wants you to see in his wounds. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Even though we're all lost on our paths of selfishness, he gathers us by taking our iniquity. Not just my guilt or your guilt but our guilt, all guilt. The shepherd suffers for the sheep. He becomes one and just a lamb. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Do you see the glory? He's showing you one word at any point could have ended this for him. Wrongly accused, wrongly sentenced, and wrongly executed. Yet he issues no protest, makes no defense. Why? Because his silence protects us. Choosing not to defend himself is how he defends us. Even when the word is silent, it is silent for you. He could have cried out injustice. The truth could have saved him. But he wanted the truth to save you. No, the Lord sings. He'll claim no justice. He will be made damaged goods, defiled and polluted, even while everyone knows he is innocent. Look at them all. Judas betrays him, but then throws the blood money into the temple because he knows Jesus is innocent. Pilate repeatedly declares him innocent, yet ends up condemning him to the cross. Pilate's own wife sent word to him as he was sitting on the judgment seat, saying, Don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I've suffered much today because of him in a dream. And the Roman centurion, who carried out his execution himself, said, Truly this man was innocent. Do you see the glory? This one act of injustice leads to the objective justification of all mankind. The Lord of Inversion chooses thorns for his crown instead of silver and gold, and spit and blood instead of sweetness and light. His choices lead to torment and torture, darkness and death, but all this leads to the greatest reversal of all, his life overriding death and making all things new. It was the will of the Lord to crush him. The servant's suffering and death was not an accident, but it was simultaneously both an act of the people and an act of God. Our greatest sin and his greatest forgiveness. We are responsible. And yet he is in control in order to save us from ourselves. This 
is what he would have us see. But what will Jesus see? When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, the Lord promises. Children, children of his righteousness, you and I. Jesus wants to see those who benefit from his sacrifice. He wants to see us safe. And that's what he's promised. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he will divide the, the spoil with the strong. The servant who had it all and gave it all will see the full sum of God's vindication. From the anguish of his life he will see. He will find full satisfaction. Yes, now we see. The servant's song ends the way it started. As a cry of victory. A victory parade with the servant of all people marching at the role of conqueror bringing home the spoils of conquest. And that is why the service ends in song with the poem, Sing my tongue, the glorious battle. Sing the ending of the fray. Now above the cross, the trophy, sound the loud triumphant lay. Tell how Christ, the world's redeemer, as a victim, won the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Good Friday is a time when the church, calling on its king, suspended between heaven and earth, makes petitions for the sake of the, of the whole world. And so let us pray now for the needs of all. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ, and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy, so that your church, spread throughout all the nations, may be defended against the adversary, and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you, for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, the rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism. They may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of this world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially Charles our King, Justin our Prime Minister, Heather our Premier, all those who who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, 
but the life of all. Hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace, that we may serve you in true fear to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian Church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your grace be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.